So before moving on to the next video, I just wanted to create a short video about a couple of bug fixes that I would like to do. The first of which is a bug in how we initialize the bitmap and lock the pages after that. Currently what we're doing is reserving the pages that the EFI memory map tell us that need to be reserved. But this can be a problem because sometimes the EFI memory map has gaps. So some bits that need to be reserved don't become reserved. So the solution that I've come up with is to reserve the entire span of memory on boot and then unreserve the sections of memory that we are free to use defined in the memory map. So let's do that now. So we have our initialize bitmap function that can stay the same. And then we have lock pages, but we want to get rid of that one. We want to put in a reserve pages starting at zero, going to memory size divided by 4096 plus one. This will reserve the entire span of memory that we have. Now in this loop we have here, we can just change a couple of things. We can make it so if it equals seven instead of does not equal seven. So now it's if it is EFI conventional memory, we can now unreserve these pages. So now we've locked the entire memory span and we've unreserved the pages that we are free to use. Now, just like we did up here where we locked the pages of the buffer, we need to do that after our loop. Most notably, this bug is evident on VirtualBox. So I'm going to build this and run it in VirtualBox before and after and see what the difference is. All right, so as you can see, this is virtual box before the fix. We have the rainbow of death and then it crashes. And now after the bug fix, we can see we have successfully gotten into our kernel. So that fixes the virtual box and possibly other systems crashing issue with our paging initialization function. Another thing that I wanted to cover is some systems have a lot of memory that we shouldn't play with beneath 0x100000. And just to make sure that that's locked, we can, after we unreserve these pages, we can now reserve pages starting at 0 and 0x100. So we'll reserve 0x100 pages, which will reserve between 0 and 0x100000. 0 0 0 0 0 0. And that's just to make sure that none of the BIOS stuff gets touched. And while we're at it, one thing I wanted to do is move this processed mouse packet function out of a loop in the kernel source and into the mouse handler. And we'll jump over into the handle ps2 mouse function and place that at the top of the handle ps2 mouse function. But now you can see the mouse is going completely out of control, so we just need to put another little fix in to fix that. I notice that the first packet that we get is out of sync, so we just need to skip that first packet. So after the process mouse packet call, we can do static bool skip equals true. If skip curly brackets skip equals false and return. All right, now let's test that and see what we get. All right, and now our mouse is back to normal, and now we can actually move the mouse around and the mouse handler is completely contained inside of the interrupt. So now it won't be relying on being inside that main loop and it won't be affected by any sort of latency if our kernel is busy or anything like that. The mouse cursor will always instantly react to the mouse movement. There's a couple of more issues, like if you use the keys at the same time you're moving the mouse around, then it sort of puts the mouse out of sync. Now, I'm not entirely sure how to fix that. One thing I want to try and do is remove these if mouse packet ready statements inside of the switch case block. So we'll remove those and see what we get now. All right, so we have the mouse and we're pressing some keys and it's a little bit better. It sort of doesn't go out of sync, but it's still causing some false packets to be thrown by the interrupt. Now I'm not entirely sure what's causing this and I'm not entirely sure how to fix it. So if you have any ideas, please be sure to leave it in the comments. Now I'm not too worried about fixing this. USB mouse and keyboard won't have this issue, so at least we could be looking forward to that. I just wanted to say a quick thank you to my patrons. We have tier 2 patrons Cole Foderado, Mad Max++, Dual Chem, Bobby Addison, Jim Borden, Rizit, and Daniel Cosper. And thank you to my tier 1 patrons Adam, Kenneth Looney, Thanks TNT, and David Gonzalez. I really appreciate any support you can give.